On this episode of Loma Fa Classic, the first part in a series of rebuilding SU carbs, we're going to turn them from this to this. Welcome back to Loma Fa Classic, and finally, it's here my video series on rebuilding SU carbs. I know many of you guys have really waited for this one. You've asked a lot in the comments below. One is that video series coming on SU carbs. Well, here's the first part. The reason it's taken so long is uh, I've had to do other work on the car and also I've had to figure out how I want to present this. It's kind of a really big topic. And my first idea was to just do it in one big video, but I realized it was going to be pretty long. So it's going to be split up in probably three parts. And this first part, There'll be a lot of disassembly going through the carb and starting to clean it up. Then in the next part, it's going to be more of detailing, getting it looking the way you want. If you want to go for the original look or for a more shiny look like this one here, and then rebuilding it, putting it back together. And then there will be a segment on tuning them as well. So it takes quite a lot of time to get them looking if you want to have them like this. It's definitely not, uh, I'm not going for a show quality or anything. This will still be in a driver, but I think it looks a lot nicer than this one over here. It's not an original look as well. I can also show you what you want to do if you want to have the original look, but this is the look that I prefer to have on my carbs. I think it looks really nice and impressive when you open up that hood at a car show or just at a gas station and check your oil and it looks nice and shiny like this. Definitely, in my opinion, it looks a lot better than just a grimy mess like this. So we're gonna head on over to my workbench. We're gonna take this, the really dirty carb, and start disassembling it. I'll show you how you disassemble this, how you take things apart without destroying anything, without damaging anything. And we're gonna have a look at the parts and also see what parts you usually need to replace when you rebuild one of these. So let's head over to my workbench and have a look at that. So this is the front carb of my 1975 Jaguar XJ6. It's an SU HS8. And as you can see, it's pretty manky looking. There's a lot of caked up dirt, fuel residue, oil, lots of scratches over here, which I'm not really sure where those are from. Um, scratches up here, down here, it's just overall it doesn't look very nice at all. The first part is to take it apart, have a look at all the parts inside, make sure that nothing is broken, and then I know if I want to order a full rebuild kit or just a partial rebuild kit, because a full rebuild kit is actually pretty expensive for these carbs, and there are a lot of things that don't really wear out, usually. Uh, the needle is usually fine, uh, seat as well, and a few other things. Uh, the jet is usually always fine, so let's take this one apart and have a look. The tools you'll need, some kind of pliers, good flathead screwdriver. If things are stuck, a small little rubber mallet, and some various wrenches. Some of these swivel ends are really good as well to get some of the parts off. So let's start by taking off the fuel hose here that goes to the jet. simply unscrews and then there should be a little o-ring or sort of a grommet in here in the float chamber um, nothing there so I'll have to look inside if something comes out then there's a few pins here that we're going to take out so we'll use the pliers to try and straighten these out a little bit I removed the hairpins now you can push these out Might be a little stiff in there, but usually you can just get them out pretty easily. Putting all the parts in a uh, plastic container to the side off camera, it's really important to not mix parts from one carb to another. That's also why I first restored one, and now I'm working on second one to keep them separate. Also, if you have two carbs or more, it's a good idea to do it because then you always have a model 
picture or a carb of what it's supposed to look like. So if you haven't taken these apart first, always take one apart at a time. If you know exactly how they go back together, you can take multiple apart at a time, but keep the parts separate so that you know which parts go to which carb. So then the jet comes out. There's a little bit of a spacer there where I like to hold in place. Spacer there, plastic in the spring, so that can all be put to the side. Now I'm going to remove the dash pots, just held in place with four screws up here. And this just lifts up. And that's what that looks like. We'll set it to the side. A little later, we're going to have a close look and inspect all the parts. So don't worry, that's coming in a little bit. Here's that big spring. And there's the piston. There's the needle at the bottom of it. It's a spring loaded on these. And I have a bunch of oil in there, so I'm going to pour that out and then lay this to the side. Now we just have the float chamber here left to do. It's held in place with a bolt that goes all the way through from here. So it's 7 16 on this one. Just undo that. I like to put that bolt back into the float chamber. Just it's easier later when you're cleaning this up to have something to hold on to so you don't drop them. And that's one really important thing. You don't want to drop any of these. This is pretty fragile. So if you drop anything on the ground, it might crack and you have to find another carburetor. So be careful not to drop it. Put this aside and we'll take that apart in a little bit. Now we just have the mechanism here for setting the mixture. So I'm going to remove that as well. And then that little pipe comes out also. Now it's time to remove the bolts here for the bracket. They are flathead, but they also have six sides on them, so you can get a little wrench on there just to get them undone the first bit so you don't strip them out. Now you can do the rest of it with a screwdriver. And then you have to undo part of the linkage up here before you can get to the last one. Now that linkage part is separated. And then we can get to and then we can get to that last bolt in there. The pipe here that the jet goes through can also pull out. There's a little spacer in there. You can just move that to the side. Now the main housing is pretty much as stripped as I'm going to strip it for just cleaning it and rebuilding it. You can also remove the throttle disc here, the butterfly. Just undoing these screws here, pulling that out and undoing that and pulling the shaft out. I'm not going to do that because the shaft doesn't have any play in it. Everything's working really well and the throttle disc is really nice and centered. So I'm going to leave that in place. It's not going to disturb my cleaning at all. But if you find that you maybe when you tested your car that you spray some carb clean around here when it was running and you notice a lot of air leaks there, then of course you want to replace those as well. And in a full rebuild kit you can get those and replace those as well. But I'm not going to do that because I think these have been replaced not that long ago. So they're in really nice shape. But this is really, really dirty. So it's going to take a lot of cleaning to get this looking nice. So that will have to soak in some degreaser and carb cleaner for a while. But that's in the next part where we're going to clean this up. So let's have a look at, for instance, here's the piston. Here's that needle. They're spring loaded on these, so you can see. So they're very easy to center. And I can't see anywhere at all on it. Nothing, no scraping, no abnormalities. So it has been centered and working. And there's no weird scraping or anything on this. 
So that's definitely usable. Nothing wrong with that. Here is the dash pot. That looks, it's very dirty inside, but there's no real scoring or nothing like that. So it's been running nice and smoothly with the piston up and down. However, the outside is a completely different story. There's a lot of scrape marks right here, which I don't know what that's from. It's really weird. The other one had that as well. Other than that, nothing really special to report. This looks in good shape. It's really dirty, really scratched up. But next episode, when I clean this up, it's going to look a lot nicer. The last thing we're going to take apart to see if we need to replace any parts is the float chamber. These screws can be really, really tight, so if you're unlucky, you might need to tap your screwdriver a little bit with a hammer to get them out so you don't damage them. They're very soft, these screws. If you recently took the carbs off your car, before you start working on them like this, remove this top first and pour out any gasoline left in there because otherwise you're going to make a mess and everything's just going to stink up. These carbs were off the car for about a month or so and I already emptied them out right when I took them off. So there should be little to no gasoline in here. That looks pretty clean inside. A little bit of debris in there can be cleaned out. Gasket looks pretty new, just like everything, confirming that I think everything has recently been replaced, or not that recent in time, but this car hasn't been driven hardly even a few thousand kilometers since then. Okay, it did rip that gasket, but that's one thing I am planning on replacing, is just any gaskets that have to do with fuel, just because you don't want any future leaks. So I'll throw away that old gasket. Well, that looks really good, nice inside. The float, doesn't sound like there's any fuel in there. Nothing, so that seems to be working fine. It seemed to be punctured. And the car was running fine, but if you didn't know how the car was running before, if these were punctured or not, you can test your float and see if it floats or not. To remove it, you just pull out this pin here. You will notice there are two sides to the pin. One has a little marking on it so it doesn't go through all the way. And the other side is completely smooth. So you pull on the side with the markings to get it out. Here's the float. Nothing wrong with this. I can reuse it. Here is the needle and seat. Controls the flow of fuel into the carp. Seat looks really nice and clean. And here's that needle. It's definitely been replaced recently. You can see it has a newer Viton tip, so it will seal really well. And I can't see any mark or dirt. It looks pretty much brand new. So all of that's really good news as well. Overall, I say the condition of this car is not bad at all. Nothing was stuck, everything moved nice and freely. And I don't think I'm gonna replace all the parts in it. I'm not gonna get the complete rebuild kit, but I am gonna get new gasket for here, and I'll get the the needle, so that's new, even though that one looks really good. I will be getting the new little O-ring or gasket for here. The rest of the jet, the fuel pipe here looks in really good condition. All of it looks, like I say, not very old at all. So for this rebuild, I'm gonna keep this. There's nothing wrong with it. It looks pretty much brand new. We can get these as well, both in the complete rebuild kit and also as loose parts. So the next step is to take all the parts, put them in a type of container. I like to use these big plastic containers from old ice cream. Put them in there. I'm going to soak them in various types of degreaser. Use small little brushes to get in all the crevices. and Basically just get them really nice and clean. And when that is done, I can assess all the parts even more. Just make sure there are no cracks anywhere. And I'm going to start polishing. But that will be in the next episode. And that's it for part one, but don't worry, part two will be up in just a few days. If you're really looking forward to it and you're not subscribed to the channel, I highly recommend that you do so you stay up to date. You can navigate to my channel down below, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you won't miss any future updates.
If you want more videos on the SU Carb right now, I've already made a video explaining how it works inside. So I'll put a link to it up above and down below so you can check it out. If you like this video, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. And let me know in the comments down below, what's the favorite car that you've had that's had SU carbs? Please let me know in the comments down below. Until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Living With A Classic. I'll see you soon.